Welcome, everyone. This session is cross-site port scanning. Our presenter today is Riaz Walaker. Riaz is uh, from Bangalore, India, and is a web application security engineer, pen tester, and network security architect for food, shelter, fun, and passion. He has found vulnerabilities in popular web applications like Facebook, Twitter, Google, Cisco, Symantec, Mozilla, PayPal, eBay, Apogee, etc., for which he is on the Hall of Fame for most of these services. Please join me in welcoming Riaz. Good evening. Uh, the presentation is titled Cross-Site Port Scanning, but then uh, when I submitted the paper to OASP uh, for the CFP, uh, after that I have managed to find a lot of other things that you can do using this vulnerability. And it's not limited to port scanning. So I went ahead and modified it to, I generalized the term using poking servers with Facebook because that's what the vulnerability was uh, where I found it the first time. I managed to find it in a bunch of applications, so uh, the final presentation title would be poking servers with Facebook, Google, Mozilla, Adobe and yet the Yahoo developer network. Right, so uh, basic introductions there. Uh, I'm a web appsec consultant for PwC STC back in India. Uh, I'm a pen tester. I do a lot of bug bounty hunting as well. I'm also the uh, null security chapter lead for Bangalore. Uh, null is India's largest open source community. And uh, I happen to be the moderator for the Bangalore chapter. Right, so. Uh, before I actually land on to the uh, vulnerability itself, I'm going to be talking about how I managed to find the first one. And this is kind of a storytelling for me. So I started hunting for bugs on uh, several bug bounty programs last May, and uh, mostly for the money, and obviously the Hall of Fames. Uh, who wouldn't want to be up with Mona Lisa and Thor? Right, so the first bug that I found with uh, Facebook allowed me to, you know, kind of the URL would allow me to fetch a page that I had control to, now, the user supplied URL. And the page would pull, uh, the application would pull the title tag from the uh, URL and display to the user. So the page was send button form shell.php. Facebook's already fixed this um, uh, several months ago. But the node URL parameter was, uh, you, know, you know, users could supply their own URLs there. Uh, when I give google.com, it fetches the title and uh, you know the icon as well as some text from the page and displays that here. So what I do? I tested this page for XSS, uh, SQL, I, LFI, uh, SQL injection, LFI, RFI, like most other uh, application tested would. Um, finally, I wanted to see what was the request that Facebook was sending, uh, you know, because it's going to be fetching, the server, uh, fetching a page from the remote server. So I wanted to see what was the HTTP request that I was sending, see if any headers are unique to Facebook service. So I set up a HTTP server with port 8080 exposed to the internet. And this was a stroke of luck that I mistyped the URL after setting up the page. Uh, I did my server colon 808 instead of 8080. And I noticed that Facebook you know, uh, gave a distinct verbose error for a closed port because 808 was closed on my system. Facebook gave me um, a unique error for the closed port. I tested again with open ports as well as closed ports. I tested with non-HTTP protocols like 20, uh, 22, 23. Um, then I tested with HTTP-based protocols as well. And I found that Facebook returned a different kind of error for you know, several different categories of ports that I would test it for. And what did I realize? I realized I could port scan the internet, I, I could port scan internet service using this vulnerability um, based on the distinct errors that Facebook gave me. What is the underlying issue with Facebook? Facebook is using underlying server-side code to you know, create socket connections to remote servers to download content. And this is technically not the issue. It's generally how uh, Facebook is doing things at the end. The primary issue was that Facebook gave distinct errors on you know, closed ports as well as open ports, uh, which is what led me to build the uh, port scanner that I'll be talking about. Uh, there were also no proper data handling for non-HTTP streams. For example, uh, Facebook is expecting uh, or rather, uh, Facebook expecting an HTTP page to come back. When you say HTTP colon google.com, uh, Facebook is expecting uh, you know, HTTP page, HTML page response to come back. But then when you specify port 22 or port 3306, it's on HTTP. So what did I do? I sent a mail to Facebook uh, describing the issue. Facebook said it's not an issue. I didn't see how this was a problem. So I sent Facebook a proof of concept Python port scanner that I wrote, in, uh, wrote using Python. I also managed to scan a couple of internet servers, uh, mostly Microsoft, uh, knowing that Facebook and Microsoft are pretty close to each other. Um, I uh, scanned some random servers on the internet. Facebook replied and acknowledged that this was an issue. Yeah, 
There you go. So this was the first bug that I found, uh, you know, with all the bug bounties that I've done. I was listed on the Hall of Fame as well as I was one of the first. Uh, in fact, I was the first one of the first Indians to be uh, to be awarded the White Hat uh, debit card as well. Then I, 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 you know, a bunch of other places that I found this vulnerability, and uh, later on when I found that you could not only limit this vulnerability to port scanning uh, servers, but you could also do a lot of other attacks on the internet. I categorized, uh, I generalized this whole vulnerability as uh, cross-site port attacks. So when does it occur? A cross-site po uh, cross port attacks occur when a web application attempts to connect to user-supplied URLs and does not validate backend responses. And this is important because most of the application vulnerabilities that we've seen, uh, we see, we've seen till date, SQL injection, cross-site scripting, and all the other top 10, most of them can be thwarted using input validation, right? But then uh, how do you control because HTTP colon uh, server IP dot uh, colon 22 is a perfectly valid HTTP URL. The uh, HTTP RSC does not allows you to insert port numbers into the URL. So validating backend responses or technically validating the output response that you're uh, that you're going to send to the client uh, is important here. XSP allows an attacker to port scan servers, attack services. We'll see a demo of this uh, internet facing as well as internal devices while proxying the attack from another web application. So if Facebook has this vulnerability, I can port scan Microsoft or Google's IP addresses using Facebook's IP address. Right, so I'm technically proxying the whole attack from there. Uh, let's take an example. For example, if there is an application which is going to, uh, which is expected to fetch an XML file from a remote server. So uh, when you say remote underscore server dot com XML file dot XML, the server status and body response that you receive is a 200 OK, and the XML file is actually retrieved. When you specify colon 22. Now, obviously, there's no uh, HTTP service running on Conan 22. It says the server status is 200, OK, but it says invalid XML data. When you say colon 3306, it says invalid XML data. And when you say 8081, it says connection refused. So based on this, what ports are open and what ports are closed? Anybody? So on remoteserver.com, what port is open, what, what ports are open and what port is closed? You know for sure that 80 is open. What other ports are open? Right, so 22 and 3306. The MySQL server uh, port on 3306 is open. Because when you uh, try to access 8081, the error message that you receive is connection refuse, which is definitive that uh, you can try it out with other closed ports, uh, yeah. you know, random higher number ports, like 40,000 odd. And you'll see that if there's a connection refuse, and if the error message is static, with all the other closed ports, then you can be sure that you know you can use this URL to port scan. Three three main issues: application displays, uh, displays verbose errors for failed socket connections. Applications do not verify received data from the remote server if the connection is successful. So when you saw the port 22, uh, you, the application managed to connect to port 22, and the file that was retrieved was not uh, you know it was not passed in proper XML format. But then the error message clearly said that XML data not received or whatever. So in, instead of that, or, or rather even when I connect into a closed port, right, if the connection is successful or not, you need to gener provide a generic error. And applications do not blacklist internal IP addresses. There are a bunch of examples that I have later on. Uh, uh, actually, I was going to do a video demo as well, but then uh, it looks like that won't work. Um, when I have noticed that applications can, you know, instead of specifying an external IP address, what would happen if you specify 127.001? Right, you're, you're technically port scanning local host. Uh, although through the firewall you may have uh, natted, uh, you may have patted the port. Uh, you could host an application on 8080 and uh, forward it through port 80 on the internet. But then, if, when you scan local host ports, you, sh you should be able to see that. Right, so why does it work? Um, for example, consider this a normal internet scenario where you have uh, firewall port 80 open, uh, 10 or 5, and you have a web server with 105. Now, web servers behind the firewall have the ability to connect outside, right? So um, to pull data, to pull files, to update itself, whatever. But then web server 105 is able to connect to a remote server as well as internal machines, right? So if, if the vulnerable application is running on 105, you should be able to attack other services as well. How many of you are PHP developers here? PHP, some are on a PHP. Nobody? Everybody's, nobody's from a developer background? Okay. There's nothing wrong with the code. Most developers program it this way, but then uh, what they're missing is one essential piece of code, uh, piece of line there that uh, verifies and tells you that if there is a connection, because the file get contents, the function file get contents is a valid PHP function, which is used to retrieve files from remote service. But then 
uh, when a connection is made, made uh, when a low level network level socket connection is made, the error message that PHP prints should not be, you know, you should have error handling here that prevents the uh, function itself from not displaying what it received from the uh, lower sockets, uh, low, low networks, of the, uh, low layers of the network. Similarly, the case with, similarly the case with uh, FSOC open, uh, which takes in multiple arguments, the same issue. If you specify, you know, a generic error for closed ports as well as for open ports when you have not received the file that you wanted to receive, for example, if you're fetching XML files or text files, and if you have received garbage, you know, uh, what happens when you connect to arbitrary ports, uh, may ensure that uh, you know you have a distinctive uh, generic error message that says that you know port's closed. It's hard to hear. Okay, sorry. So I'll do a demo. Okay. I have an application um, which accepts file, but I'm not connected to the internet, but then uh, what this application does, if I type the name of uh, the path of a text file on the internet, it will fetch the text file and display it to me here, okay? So instead of, uh, you know, fetching text files, what would happen if I, I'm just checking if it will connect internally to port 8080. Okay, what do you see here? It fetches whatever data is received from as a default file for port 8080, which is the JBoss. There's a JBoss server running on the on the same system, but obviously it's not accessible outside. Most um, the point here I'm trying to make is that most applications, sys admins as well as application developers, do not program applications that are running on internal networks securely. Uh, that, that's true in most companies. You would have uh, secure applications. You'd, you'd fund all your research. You, you'd fund all your security programs into securing applications that are exposed to the internet. But internal applications, the HR applications, the finance applications, are not you know, always tested for security. So if there is a way to attack applications that are running on the internal network, this is it. You should be able to access internal applications, internal services running on the, on the remote server. Right, so if I attempt to access maybe a random closed port. So I say it's on, it's a, okay. I'm using tamper data here. Everybody's familiar with tamper data? Tamper data is a Firefox add-on that uh, allows you to trap requests that are going out from your browser. You can then edit your request and then uh, mostly post requests and uh, edit your requests and then send them out. Uh, most pen testers, web application security uh, consultants use this to bypass client-side Java protect uh, JavaScript protections. Okay. It did not give me any response. Let me try accessing. I'm going to try and generalize this based on what error messages are received. There's, there's no error message here, but what can you see? That in all the cases wherein uh, you had a port closed on the remote server, the size, the response packet size, uh, the resp HTTP response size that was received is always 303. Okay, that's 303 bytes that have been received from the server. So there are multiple ways of looking at it, not only um, as descriptive error messages, you could look at time-based um, uh, you know, functions as well. You try to connect to an open port, uh, the application takes a lot of time. You try to connect to a closed port, the application immediately displays some text or the other. So based on this as well, uh, through inference, you, you should be able to do a port scan. Right, so we saw 8080 is open, we saw 303, uh, sorry, we saw a bunch of other ports that are closed. So because we have now a distinctive way to identify closed ports and open ports based on um, either the size of the packet that is coming in and error message and other things, we can script this. Is it visible behind? Okay. Right, so um, I ensure here that if the length of the data that is received is 303, then the port is closed. Otherwise, I can print the data that is received 
and I'll mark it as open. So if I run this, okay, it's a custom Python script that I've written. I'm scanning for ports 21, 22, 3389, 3306, 8987, 8080, 8081, 1990. Okay. It says 21 closed, 22 closed, 3306 open. Okay. It's found a bunch of data. It says 21 closed, 22 closed, 3389 closed. That's RDP is closed. And I see 3306 open. I mean, MySQL server is running on the same system. I also see an 8987 port open, which is some sort of network simple time server. It's, it's some sort of server that is, that prints the time on the server when you specify an input. Right? So let's see if that's vulnerable. I also printed a bunch of HTML, so I'm assuming this is from, yeah, it's from 8080. Right? We saw that there was a JBoss server running on the same system. There's 8081 and there's 9090 which are closed. I found this, uh, I, I found XSP in Facebook. Uh, th this is just half of the whole setup that I found. A uh, bunch of other places, Google, Adobe, Pinterest, Yahoo, the developer network, which is pretty nasty. Uh, the RPG consoles, Mozilla Foundation. Uh, for Mozilla, it was recently awarded uh, the largest bug bounty that they have on their role. Okay, uh, the vulnerability with Facebook was that when attempting to connect to an open port above 1024, it printed some text. Okay. Now I'm, I'm all I'm doing is HTML parsing. Okay. Um, either you can do HTML parsing for the data received. You can look at time responses again, or you could look at uh, the response packet size that has come back. So based on multiple things, unique behavior when you're trying to connect to a closed port or an open port. So application specific response for open port above 1024, I don't know why the behavior was with Facebook this way, but then when uh, connecting to an open port above 1024, I had text. When connecting to a port above one, uh, below 1024, uh, it said the page at whatever server could not be reached because the server returned status code 502. Although the status response that I received as HTTP was 200 okay. But in the backend, a 502 was received. For a closed port, it said service return status code 503. So based on these error messages, I, I could you know build a port scanner around this. I found this with Google as well, uh, and their Google Webmasters is fixed again. Um, when attempting to connect to, so for all my testing, uh, when uh, in the event that I was not able to set up uh, a server of my own, I used scanme.nmap.org, which is uh, a public uh, nmap, NMAP owned server set up by Fidor. Uh, which has uh, certain ports open, and uh, Fidor encourages you to use that if you're practicing Nmap. So uh, it's public knowledge that port 22 and port 80, 80, uh, port 80 is open on that. So uh, when attempting to connect to port 80, it says we couldn't find the verification meta tag. When connecting to port 22, it says your server returned an invalid response. Or when connecting to a closed port, it says we were unable to connect to your server. That's why you have three distinct error messages. You can use that. Uh, yeah, the Mozilla Marketplace also had this issue. Um, this is based on response headers that I received. So for open port again, for open HTTP port, it said we saw text slash HTML right here. And uh, for close, uh, for open non-HTTP ports, it said uh, it did not give me any, um, you know, MIME type. And for a closed port, it directly said network is unreachable. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to skip that video. Right, so, so what? You could put scan. What else can you do? So uh, that's what I said when I submitted the paper for US AppSec. I, well, I was stuck at uh, post scanning, which is why the title is uh, post, uh, post scanning, cross site post scanning. But then I also realized, and I managed to set up a server wherein you could use this vulnerability to attack internal applications as well as attack internal services. Right, so what, what can you do? Because you have the ability to send GET requests to internal web applications, right? So you can um, uh, if, imagine there are a bunch of applications out there with people host on internal networks, uh, you know, which are vulnerable to URL-based attacks like SQL injection or parameter manipulation. Uh, there are a bunch of places where uh, you have URL-based LFIs and RFIs possible, right? So you can attack all those internal applications once you've done fingerprinting on the web app using XSPA. 
Oh, because we also control the get slash data part uh, when, when you're trying to send a request. Let me quickly show that to you. I'll use tamper data. Because I, yeah, because I can control what data I'm sending as part of the get request. You know, although uh, from this application uh, I'm posting to this application, but in the back end, the application is sending uh, the request out to localhost to fetch test.txt as a get request, right? Because I can control this part. I can control this part, right? I, I, I can I can insert any data I want here. And the application will, on my behalf, send the same request to the locally hosted application. Right, so, yeah. so what does that create for us? Because you can send uh, the get slash data part is control, controlled by the user, you could attack internally running applications, uh, internally running programs as well. Imagine if there is uh, uh, a program on the, on the same server or on the network which accepts data and is vulnerable to a stack-based buffer overflow. You send it a bunch of uh, trash data and the application crashes. You have denial of service. But if you're able to control what you're sending and if you're able to figure out what operating system, you know, a bunch of other things, you can, you can build a reliable exploit and send it out to the server as well. You could practically run code on the remote server. Okay? Um, I'll do a demo of this uh, because I have, I have the exploit code ready for one of the applications. As I said, uh, sending a bunch of text to uh, sending a bunch of garbage text to applications or internally hosted uh, programs could crash the remote service. You would practically doing a denial of service for the internal network. Let's do a demo of. Okay. So as I said uh, earlier, we f we saw that we found there was JBoss server running. Now, JBoss, uh, older versions have had this very peculiar, um, the default configuration did not have an administrative password, right? Uh, JBoss consoles, JMX consoles run on port 8080. And uh, the flaw, there was a primary flaw with the application installation was that there was no default password for uh, the JMX console. You could merely connect to port 8080 and you were in, right? The default configuration said that. So if I try to figure out, you know, if port 8080 is open, It says, yeah, this is a JBoss instance. There were two sets of vulnerabilities with JBoss. One was obviously the, uh, there was no uh, username and password requirement for uh, you to log in into the 8080 console, JMX console. The other was a very peculiar and uh, you know, much, a much less exploited vulnerability with uh, JBoss was that you could convert a post request as a one-liner get request and send data to JBoss. Okay? Practically, uh, the implication of this was that people could do a CSRF attack. Uh, there was no token or anything that was going either through post or get. But then because you could convert, um, uh, because it was handy for you to convert a post request to a get request and still j it would process it, we can actually use that to attack the remote server. And okay. That visible? Okay. Uh, this was a one-liner JBoss uh, vulnerability that existed in a lot of installations on the internet. It's still now if you if you if you use uh, you know smart Google Doc and you should be able to figure this out. The JMX console has an HTML adapter, uh, multiple arguments, but then the primary and important argument for us is the ARG zero, which is the end. Now you can specify an external WAR file on this URL. The JBoss console would download the WAR file for you, deploy it without any, uh, you know, without you requiring to enter any credentials anyway. So it's a one-liner attack code. You could merely upload a shell, but how do you attack this? This is inside. This is not exposed to the internet. Because XSPA allows you to access applications that are running locally, you know, on the internal network and not exposed to the internet because it's sending get requests. I control this, right? So I have another server. 
which is hosting a shell. So I'll quickly try and access and see. I may have done this already during testing. So um, shell slash shell dot JSP command equal to dir. Oh, it says file not found. But when I use this URL, So what does it say now? It says operation completed successfully without a return value. That means our shell has been uploaded. How do you access a shell? There you go. So we have shell access to the server on which the JBoss console is running. What did we do? We attacked the JBoss installation using XSPA. Right? So using the, uh, from the internet, we, at, uh, we uh, looked at an application that had XSPA. Using the XSPA vulnerability, we managed to push a war file to an internally hosted JBoss system. And then we are using XSPA again to fetch uh, you know, details from the server. Oh, if this was not bad, something else here. This is a server that's running, uh, that's hosting the JBoss console as well as this JBoss console, and the application on 8987, port 8987. Now, uh, the application is vulnerable to a stack-based buffer overflow. It's readily available on the internet. I'll, I've broken down the code. I should give us a hint. Okay. Uh, it's scary at the beginning when you look at it. But then, uh, the upper line uh, before the uh, white space, before the uh, carriage return, is buffer data that we're sending. Okay. And uh, the second line is actually the address of a register which is going to be put into EIP. Okay, and the last is the shell code. Uh, this will pop up calculator, right? So uh, now because HTTP is a text-based protocol, I cannot send. I mean, I had sh uh, shell code that you know, normally when you're doing exploitation over the network, uh, you can send binary data, but because HTTP is text-based, you need to convert all your shell code to pure text, right? So finding a register whose address could be converted to ASCII equivalents. Uh, was a little bit uh, uh, you know, time consuming there, but then managed to pull this off. So if I push this data, via the application, oh, I'll tamper, I'll run a tamper request on this. So I'm trying to access, or rather I'm, I'm trying to connect to port 8987, okay. I'll, I'll generally say okay for, for now. Let's see what, what the response comes back. So it says network simple time server version 111. I says please enter, please enter your name. And what was the name? Normally you, when, when you connect to this application, you enter your name and it says hello, whatever. The server time is whatever. But then if you see carefully, if you see carefully, um, it said hello get slash HTTP 1.1, which was being sent via the PHP web application. So this is uh, happening at the backend. So because I control the get slash data part, let's see if I can push a shell code to this. I'll have the VM running in the background so that we can see if calculator pops up. Sure. I've tampered. Let's pull this down. I say submit. To tamper. That's right, so because I control the slash data part. I paste the shell code here. There you go. So what have I done? Using XSPA, I have managed to run code on the local server. Right, so, uh, I don't have a backtrack VM, but then I, there's another piece of code that I had which would allow me to open a reverse shell back to my system because systems are allowed to connect outside the firewall. Right, so this is bad. 
So uh, using XSPA, we were able to um, upload a shell to a JBoss installation as well as uh, run code on the local server. So how do you fix this? The basic mitigation is to force applications to not fetch data apart from uh, over servers uh, that don't utilize port 80 and 443. But it's not always uh, the case because there are some applications that run on esoteric ports uh, that are not 80 and 443. In such a case, if data from other ports is required to be fetched, make sure that the data can be you know, passed in the format that the application is expecting it to. So if you're going to fetch an XML file, make sure that the XML file is what is coming back. Obviously, do not allow connections to private IP addresses. This is bad. Handle all errors. Uh, this should have been on top. Uh, but handle all errors uh, and exceptions and timeouts that um, you know arise because the application was not able to connect to a service on the back end or whatever the reason is. Display generic error messages. So if you manage to connect to an open port uh, and retrieve an XML file, if, if it can be passed, show the XML file. But if you manage to connect to an open port that is not HTTP based, and if you manage to, con uh, obviously, uh, when you're trying to connect to an, a closed port, in both the cases, make sure that the error message is generic. And that's what uh, Mozilla did with the fix uh, for their marketplace. So um, initially, when uh, I submitted this, um, the error message that they've put in place now uh, tells that if I'm connected to an open port, but, I'm, but the data that is being retrieved is not in the proper format that they're expecting, they just say uh, file in invalid format. And if I'm connecting to a closed port, they still say file in invalid format. So I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if the port is open or closed. So that's smart there. Bunch of references, I've almost come to the end of the talk. Uh, bunch of references, the RFC protocol for, um, the RFC for uh, HTTP. Um, Arsenic had done uh, something similar, uh, but then that was purely client side, wherein a server that you're connecting to could use uh, CSS and JavaScript and port scan your internal network. Um, both those articles there. Uh, special thanks to all these guys who managed to, you know, bunch of the program as well as the expert code uh, development. Yeah, the end. Mm, yeah, because, see, ideally what you're trying to do using XSPA is uh, you're using error messages um, in case of when you're doing port scan, using error messages that the application is returning to identify if the port is open or closed. My MMAP is too direct that way. MMAP uh, does all this at the network level. You're doing this at the application level. So yeah, uh, almost all of them are, except for three companies that are still uh, pending. Uh, they don't realize how you know easy this is to exploit, as well as a bunch of other things. I haven't spent time on researching what else you can do once you have access to internal networks. But then it's pretty nasty, uh, at least in, and I have tried utilizing this in uh, the pen test that I do for my organization as well as a uh, bunch of other people from the community that I was talking about back in India. And uh, most of them have come back to me and said that, uh, you know, a lot of applications on the internet uh, have this issue. And uh, a couple of my friends who also do bug bounty have managed to find this with other applications as well and you know, get a bounty for that as well. This mo mostly comes out at, uh, during pen testing. For SAP applications, for example, there's a zero day standing out there. Um, one of the SAP uh, URLs can be used to port scan internal systems. That's still uh, that's still not fixed. Cool. That guy's my hero. <laughs> yeah, so. You can reach me at, uh, that's my blog, and um, I haven't blogged about this yet, as yet. I'll be doing that once I get back to India. You can follow me on Twitter on Riaz Walikar. Thank you. <laughs>